Reincarnation of the Strongest Sword God Written by Lucky Old Cat Chapter 286 The Eternal Throne Sure Fong had not expected Lifeless Blade to be such a forthright person. Although Lifeless Blade had only taken out an ordinary-looking silver ring, Sure Fong knew exactly how precious this item was. The reason being, not only had he seen this ring in the past, he had even owned one before. The ring was a space ring, it was a storage item. One could not judge it simply based on its mysterious iron rank. The space ring could store up to 200 slots of items. It was a very significant amount. It also did not impart any additional weight to the user, regardless of the number of items stored in it. However, this was still not the most important point about this ring. Instead, the space ring excelled the most when used during battle. Although it did not have many uses in a normal battle, when used in a fight between experts, a battlefield, or a boss battle, it could bring about game-changing effects. For example, if players wished to use magic scrolls or support items during a battle, they needed to first place their hands into their bags and search for their items before pulling those out. This entire process would waste much time. However, it was a different story if players possessed the space ring. With a simple thought, the item specified would instantly appear within the player's hands. The space ring was much more convenient than a bag. In reply to Lifeless Blade's offer, however, Sure Fong shook his head and said, This item is too valuable. I cannot accept it. Brother Yi Fong, I am a man who never takes advantage of his friends. I'll feel extremely guilty if you don't accept it. Moreover, this ring is merely a storage item. It's not particularly valuable, so please accept it, Lifeless Blade said. Well, how about this? I have a favor to ask of Brother Blade. I wonder how many reputation points does Brother Blade have at Star Moon City right now? Sure Fong whispered, sighing. Lifeless Blade grew confused at Sure Feng's question, failing to understand why Sure Fong would ask him such a thing. However, he still chose to answer honestly. I'm only 30 points away from becoming a minor noble of Star Moon City. As the capital city of Star Moon Kingdom, the reputation points of Star Moon City was the most difficult to earn out of all the cities in the kingdom. Even if Lifeless Blade and his team were amazing, they were still a distance away from becoming nobles of the city. 30 points? Sure Fong sank into deep contemplation. He thought to himself, that's not a lot, I guess. If he completes those several quests, he should be able to get those points. Must your favor require a noble to accomplish, Brother Yi Fong? Lifeless Blade asked. Yeah. Sure Fong nodded. Only by becoming a noble could one purchase a stall in Star Moon City. Also, exchanging of stalls could only be conducted between nobles of Star Moon City in order to prevent players from taking advantage of any loopholes. However, Sure Fong was a demon hunter. No matter where he went, he would still be treated like a noble. Hence, after Lifeless Blade purchased the stall, there would be no problems if he simply transferred ownership of the stall to Sure Fong. In this way, Sure Fong would have a stall in Star Moon City to officially sell his items. Originally, Sure Fong had thought to complete a few quests in Star Moon City to increase his reputation here. However, it would not be easy to obtain 100 Star Moon City reputation points. He needed to invest plenty of time to do so. Meanwhile, Lifeless Blade had a trustworthy character, and it would be much faster to earn just 30 reputation points than to earn 100 reputation points. At first, Lifeless Blade felt ashamed for being unable to be of any help to Sure Fong. However, Sure Feng's next remark immediately sent him into a daze. I know a few high-level quests that can increase reputation points. After Brother Blade completes them, you should be able to become a noble of Star Moon City. After saying so, Sure Fong proceeded to list out the few quests he had in mind to Lifeless Blade, withholding nothing at all. This shouldn't be a good idea, right? Lifeless Blade was nearly left speechless. Originally, he had fully intended to help Sure Fong. In the end, however, he had been the one to receive help from Sure Fong instead. Currently, the many guilds in Star Moon City were desperately searching for quests that could increase one's reputation, holding back nothing to do so. However, even when they offered a huge reward for any related information, they still had no luck in finding any. Yet, 
Shifeng had just casually revealed to him four high-level quests that rewarded reputation points, his casual remarks making it seem as if these quests were plain cabbages that could be found anywhere. Is the difficulty of these quests too hard for you to manage? Shi Feng suddenly came to a realization when he saw Lifeless Blade's troubled expression. I still know a few quests that reward reputation. However, as their difficulty is much lower, the reputation points rewarded is similarly low. You'll have to complete at least seven or eight of them in order to accumulate 30 points. Lifeless Blade's mind was an utter mess now. He even started to suspect Shurfong was a GM, to actually know of so many reputation quests in Star Moon City. However, Lifeless Blade quickly dispelled this notion from his mind. After all, God's domain was controlled by the main God system. Nobody else was allowed to interfere with the game. Hence, the quests in the game were auto-generated by the system, and nobody should know about them in advance. Of course, if there was an exception to this point, then that would be the extremely mysterious beta testers. However, after God's Domain was officially released, many settings and quests in the game were changed. In theory, the quests that were originally present during the beta test should no longer exist. Thinking up to this point, Lifeless Blade was thoroughly confused by Shi Feng's identity. Just how was he able to know so many things? Are you wondering why I know so much? Naturally, Shi Feng could discern Lifeless Blade's doubts. A Lifeless Blade silently nodded his head, making no attempt to hide his thoughts. It's because I am a reincarnated person. I returned to this time from ten years into the future. Hence I know about all these quests, Shi Feng said in full honesty. Brother Yi Feng sure knows how to joke. Lifeless Blade abruptly burst into laughter. I'll complete these quests as quickly as possible. After I've managed to become a noble, I'll immediately notify Brother Yi Feng. Lifeless Blade knew full well that everyone had their own secrets. Meanwhile, information on reputation quests would definitely be categorized as a top secret by guilds. Shi Feng's willingness to reveal such precious information to him showed how much trust Shi Feng placed in him. If Lifeless Blade still tried to probe deeper into the matter, then he would simply be too insensible. I'm telling the truth. Shi Feng laughed bitterly. I know. Lifeless Blade nodded his head repeatedly, the smile on his face seemingly saying, I understand. Shi Feng was left completely speechless. Although he had long since grown familiar with such a behavior, he still could not help but feel helpless every time he was faced with it. Why wouldn't anybody believe him even though he was telling the truth? Why must the world make an honest man like him tell a lie before somebody was willing to believe him? Shi Feng was no longer able to make sense of this world. Soon after, Lifeless Blade added Shi Feng as a friend before hurrying off to complete the quests. Meanwhile, thanks to Lifeless Blade, Shi Feng now had a better understanding of Star Moon City's situation. After Lifeless Blade's departure, Shi Feng hailed a horse carriage and headed to the War God's Temple of Star Moon City. He intended to continue carrying out his legendary ranked main storyline quest. The War God's Temple of Star Moon City was built beside the palace. From the outside, the building looked like a magnificent and majestic pyramid. And at the summit of this pyramid was a house-sized sunstone, which exuded a divine light. Be it day or night, this sunstone would shine brilliantly on the entire war god's temple, and one couldn't help but admire this dazzling construction when seeing it. As the main branch of the war god's temple, it had tier 3 NPCs roaming around outside the temple itself, and even a tier 5 shadow saint would not be able to penetrate the tight security here. Although this was not Shurfang's first time visiting this war god's temple, it was still his first time coming to the ninth floor of the temple. The Eternal Throne Just the NPC guiding Shurfang to this place was already a tier 4 glory knight. In other cities, such an NPC would be an overlord-like existence that could cause others to tremble in fear. However, in this place, this NPC simply amounted to a guide. After entering the Eternal Throne, Shi Feng immediately discovered one purple throne and nine golden thrones suspended in the center of the room. On the sides were fifty silver thrones. Aside from the empty purple throne, every other throne was occupied by a person. Moreover, 
These people were all apex powerhouses of God's domain. A single step of theirs could send tremors throughout the entire continent. However, among all these people, only one of them had a real body. The others were simply phantoms. Sitting in their thrones, these powerhouses quietly observed Shurfoam. Meanwhile, as the recipient of these gazes, Shurfoam could not help but feel that his life was no longer in his hands. His body felt incomparably heavy under these stairs, and his back was also already drenched in sweat. This was the imposing aura of a true apex powerhouse. It was not something Tier 4 classes could ever hope of equaling, as expected of one of God's domain's strongest powers. To think they actually have so many apex powerhouses in their midst. Shurfong was racked with emotion right now. Although he had played God's domain for over a decade, this was the first time he personally witnessed the War God's Temple's true strength. What an interesting young man. However, I don't believe a little guy like you can accomplish that quest. This is something that involves the fate of the entire continent, after all. Since it is so, let us give this little guy a test. If he passes it, I believe that nobody here would have any other objections, right? A test? This lady likes it. Let's go with that. If he passes the test, I'll throw in my vote of support. If he fails, well, he'll already be dead at that point, so no punishment will be necessary. How are we going to test him? Obviously, we are going to activate the Twelve Trials. Ha ha ha. The Twelve Trials. I have only heard of it before and only treated it as a legend. The last time it was activated was more than 900 years ago. I didn't expect that I would be so lucky as to witness it being activated in my lifetime. I must really thank you, little guy. I do hope you can last a few rounds, though. Let this old man here widen my horizons.